All right, I want to start off giving all praise, honor, and glory. Call Halal, La, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rachak, Kodash, Bakabam. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Peace and salutations to the Akim, right of the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and sincerity, risking their lives and the freedom to do so. Shalom to the Akwathi and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willing, this is an edifying video. Um, Shalom to the confusion of face, brethren, joined onto our ranks. Shalom to all the elders. Oh, that's the spirit, too. <laughs> Shalom to all the elders and, you know, all the men from the Akwaf to the Akim that's pushing this truth. Or, 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 I mean, you just, you know, doing what the Most High, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, has you to do, you know, to further this truth. If it's just being, you know, a concubine or the slakia, being a wife or a mother to a man of the Lord's children to being uh, a man out there on the highways and hedges, you know, pushing the truth. Slakia for that. Hey, uh, this is the brother Yahweh Sapa out of GMS Cleveland Church coming at you with another lesson. Um, just a faithful and fellow, uh, fellow servant. Lord willing, I'm faithful to the end. Coming at you with another lesson, and I kind of, you know, digressed a little bit because, you know, it's just amazing, you know, when you're in the truth, you know, if you recognize when the spirit moves, the spirit is, you know, it's amazing. That's why this thing is such a beautiful thing, you know. But uh, the reason why I said that because I wanted to, the, 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 this lesson is inspired because of the fact that uh, I was watching Elder Malcolm's video on this one, Truth is Offensive to the Wicked, about this rabbi, Shapiro, Rabbi Shapiro, and um, Salakia, um, it put me in the spirit to actually do a video, so I, you know, it inspired me, I'm reading this book, I tend to, you know, I tend to read, you know, sources outside the scriptures, but not just that. I tend to, um, oh, you know, we, we all know that there's no, um, what's that, I think it's in the book of Isaiah, I forgot what chapter I want to say, like 33 or something like that, where it, talk, where it says there's no book that is the scriptures match, roughly paraphrasing, or it's mate, meaning it's it has no book equal to it. So everything has to be basically, um, you, you know, you can read outside sources, sources, but it's got to be lined up and matched with the scriptures. And um, I was reading this book by this author, this guy named um, Jonathan Kahn. Now, if you're familiar with him, he this is the book I'm reading now, The Paradigm, The Ancient Blueprint That Holds the Mystery of Our Times by Jonathan Kahn. And um, this is a picture of the author. Jonathan Kahn is a Mosaic rabbi, biblical scholar, four-time New York Times bestselling author. And these are some of the books, The Harbinger, The Book of Mysteries. Harbinger, the, the Oracle, I wasn't even familiar with that, and, um, the, the, you know, like, the, the thing that got me interested in reading the, 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 the author's book was because of the fact that some of the things, like, how he lined up, like, basically, he, he is aware of that, like, how there's nothing new under the sun, you know, I'm not gonna get it, but, you know, in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, let me get it, uh, Salakia. This is the thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there's no new thing under the sun. So at the end of the day, he lines up things that happened in the past with the events that's happening to the day. And, you know, if you ever read The Harbinger, which I'm not suggesting, but, you know, because you've got to be in the spirit where you can chew the meat and spit out the bone. Like, I've heard the apostles say that, like, it was a statement that the um, elder to heart made about, he said, you know, they grounded in their faith. You know, him and the other elder apostles, he said he feel that he could read a book of witchcraft and, you know, read it and it won't, you know, really fuck with his spirit. So lock it or, you know, you know, I'm sure it's demons on them books, you know, but he, and I can believe that, you know what I mean? But that's why you got so many bug outs because you got people that want to go further than, you know, like the most I give you just what you need. 
Now, like I just did a video about gluttony, and gluttony is beyond just eating. It's greed. You know, that's what America pushes a lot. You know, um, it's funny. There's a scripture in the book of Ecclesiasticus. I just read it. Uh, I'm gonna get it real quick. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, or book of Sirach, um, chapter ten, verse um, nine. <laughs> um, and it's um, it's because of Elder Malcolm that I actually seen this script. It said, "Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such a one set of his own soul to sell, because while he liveth, he cast away his bowels." And basically, a covetous man. That was the point of it. I mean, you know, and that's a greedy person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like at the end, of, he says nothing worse than. You know, America's a, a very greedy ass nation and it puts a greedy spirit on you. That's why you got people that live beyond their means. People aren't just content with what the most I've given them. And that's why, like I said, once again, a lot of people gonna take that chip. But um the point I, I the reason why I'm bringing out, like I said, the whole book and bringing out this author is because the simple fact is I was reading something. Now, this is a biblical scholar. You you heard what he said. He's a biblical scholar. I'm, I believe he's an Amalekite. He's an Amalekite, because um, it said he's a rabbi, and he's supposed to be a biblical scholar. So, you know, I was reading the book, and I'm not going to you know, spoil it, but um, I was reading, because basically, like I said, he lines things up from the past, and he, like, correlates them to today. So, like I said, that's why his books are interesting, but it makes you wonder, is he doing it for filthy lucre? Because, I mean, ain't no, I mean, like, and it's through the spirit, like, they were going in, a lot of the elder apostles going into, on that guy Zabak. And, um, you know, Zabak deals with a camp that's down in, in our city, you know what I'm saying? So he's been here a few times. But, um, you get to wondering, everybody, anybody can make a mistake. Satan can jump in your mouth at any time. It just happened to me recently. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew it was Satan too. Like, I offended somebody that could help me. And I'm like, well, damn, where'd that come from? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it, you know, so that's just like Satan trying to hinder me. But at the end of the day, you know, and I got a part to play in it, but that's not nothing here or there. If anybody understands the spiritual aspect, Satan, what he do? He jumped on Peter. You got to remember that. So anyhow, um, the thing is, okay, I'm reading this book. This is the the paradigm, um, and it's page 148, and the chapter it talks about the warrior. So. Um, the warrior, it goes into um, Jehu. And um, this is not the first trans um, discrepancy I found in the book. But I look past it because, like I said, it's a certain interesting topic. It even gave me certain ideas for videos, you know what I mean? Like what, something I wanted to bring up because I did a series on Elijah and whatnot. So, you know, it, 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 you know but at the same time, it, I can't trust a biblical scholar. You should know this. Okay, now look. It says, um, when it's talking about the at the point when um, Elisha was sent to um, to basically anoint Jehu as the um, new king of Israel when Jeram, um, what's her name, um, Jezebel's son, Jezebel and Ahab's son was on the throne. So, you know, these was the king of the northern kingdom. So, I'm going to start it's, it's at page 147 because it says, I think this is, um, bear with me for a second. This is 2 Kings 9, and I think he's using verses 1 to 3. It says, and Elisha. The prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Get yourselves ready. Take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. Now when you arrive at that place, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nipsi, Nipsi, and go in and make him rise up from among his associates and take him to an inner room. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus, the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and do not delay. So he he's telling it like a storyteller. He goes into, like he's doing his commentary on it. He says like the act was revolutionary. A new king was being anointed while the present king still sat on the throne. The present king was Jerome. Jehu had been anointed to see him. 
The anointing had taken place in Ramoth Gilead, the same place where Ahab had met his end. That had been the first part of the judgment. The second part, the end of Ahab's dynasty had been delayed, but its time had come. Now, because uh, this is verse 2, so I'm going I'm to read all the way up to the point to make my point, and then I'm going to go into scripture, and I'm going to show something on the internet. It says this verse 2. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramoth the Gilead, and when he arrived, there were the captains of the army sitting. And he said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu said, for which one of us? And he said, for you, commander. Okay, it says, the servant found Jehu in a military encampment. He had been engaged in a battle for Ramoth Gilead under orders of King Jerram. Verse 3. Then he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head and said to him, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of the Lord over Israel. You shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master, that I meant Salakia, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish. So that was verse 3. And that show you how cold the Most High is. Because when you really go into that account, he prophesied through Elijah that the house is going to be torn down. But yet still it didn't come to pass until Elisha. So that you got to take time. That's all strategic. Just like these 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 princes on the, upon the earth today, these rulers that's trying to play the chess right now. And know who's cold at the, 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 the geopolitical chess? Putin. <laughs> That's a dangerous man. And they don't get it. You like you you playing with this business, Mayor. Man, Y'all still looking at that Trump like he's so much of a motherfucking Putin is was the head of the KGB. You get what I'm saying? He was the head like spy. You get what I'm saying? Like that became the president. Like I was listening to one of the brothers go into it. He was like, shit, you gotta remember the the old USSR broke up. Putin is the one to turn it back. They was trying to become a democracy. Putin, Putin basically is the one to turn it back to like a communist, you know, government. You know, um, it says the servant anointed Jehu as king of Israel to succeed Jeram and gave him a prophecy. The prophecy foretold the end of Ahab's dynasty. The words were similar to those given to Ahab himself by Elijah. Khan. So that's the spirit. In the box vine vineyard, because you remember they tricked. Um, well, he didn't do it. Jezebel, remember, had the box killed because he 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 um, Ahab wanted the vineyard, but it was a possession of it was in his bloodline, and it's a law set for the Israelites that you can't just sell uh, inheritance like that. Um, and a Ahab knew that, but his wicked ass wife. You know what I'm saying? That's what I say. Like when he corresponds, he corresponds like a Jezebel spirit on Hillary Clinton. And when you take the time to think about it, yeah, that bitch do good. I mean, with that Jezebel, Jezebel spirit, like a lot of these women today have a Jezebel spirit. You know what I mean? You know, it's a controlling ass woman. You know what I'm saying? And then you got these pussy ass niggas. I was gonna do a video on it. That got the Ahab spirit because Ahab just allowed her to do the shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, it says. And box vineyard. You gotta remember, and she was a dangerous bitch too. She probably was putting her pussy on him and all that. You know what I mean? Like when you go into the whole history of, you know, she brought the the the, the priest of Baal there. You know what I mean? It was a lot of sex and prostitution there. You know, that's where you get a lot of those um, Baphomets from. You know, women that look like or men that look like women. You know, with penises. Yeah, like I said, it's a hell of a. a um, the topic, the way the book presents it, and like I said, it actually inspired me to do an actual video to bring out this history and the accounts. But not to digress, it says, when Jehu's anointing the die was cast, with with Jehu's anointing the die was cast, the overturning and end of Ahab's house was now set in motion. Through this one unlikely figure, a man who would rise to the nation's center stage with absolutely no political experience and no political power, the history of the nation would turn who was he? Now, this is, like I said, the discrepancy that I came across. Now, this is from this biblical scholar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It says, unlike those who dwell, unlike those who dwell in a royal house, those whose authority he would rise to challenge, Jehu had no royal blood or lineage 
that would give him any right to the throne. Nor was he a politician. He was an outsider, a most unlikely ruler. And just to, you know, show you, because they always want to question what we say, because we ain't, uh, like, got no credentials behind our names. <laughs> but do you believe whatever the fuck this pale person said? It says, unlike those who dwell in the royal house, those whose authority he would rise to challenge Jehu had no royal blood. So that's what I just wanted to show, prove. Now this is a biblical scholar. He then went through a rabbinic school. They constantly they learn in Bible scriptures. Now let me show you something. Because when you go into his lineage, see, first of all, if you know anything, the Israelites believed in you couldn't just have an outside ruler. It had to be one of their own. That's why, the, you know, you had the, the, the Sadducees and Pharisees and shit like that. You know, like, like, like they paid homage to the Romans and was pushing the Romans' philosophies. And, you know what I mean, they trying to keep the little shit they had because it was like a classism type thing. You know, they they was higher up than the, the average Israelite. You know, they was able to tell them. What, it's like a nigga. I used to have this job at this restaurant. And it was a kitchen manager. He an Edomite. He getting paid fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. It was a dude that's regular, just a regular uh, cook. He probably making like thirteen, fourteen. The kitchen manager would give him that position to go ahead. You can close up the store, stock this, do all that. And the dude would do the job, but no, for no more extra money. He was just doing it because he wanted the sense of I got power. And I used to look at this nigga like he used to think he was somebody too. And I'm looking at him like this the dumbest thing ever. You know what I'm saying? If you gonna do all that, why don't you just go to another company and run that kitchen? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and that's what most niggas do. You know, they house niggas. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to go into Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was who? Jehoshaphat, according to 1 Kings 15 and 24, was the son of Asa, the king of the kingdom of Judah. So, you had the north kingdom and the south kingdom. Judah was in the south. The northern kingdom is where Jeram was, and Ahab was Jeram's father. I'm going to show you something. To show you how this guy full of shit. Now, Jehoshaphat had sons. You see all the sons. Jehu was the 10th king of the northern kingdom of Israel since Jeroboam the first noted for exterminating the house of Ahab at the instruction of Yahweh. They said Jehovah. He was the son of Jehoshaphat, grandson of Nietzsche. So all the Most High did was took a man from that was from the southern kingdom, you know what I'm saying? Because Jehoshaphat was the king of the southern kingdom, and took him and made him the king of the northern kingdom. Now I, I forget who was the actual at the time of when he was the king. Uh, who was the king at of the southern kingdom at the time? But my point of making all and bringing out and doing this lesson is to show you how full of shit Esau is. That's a you know, see how they, and that's the best lie. You know, trust me, I used to lie a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, the best lie has a lot of truth in it. So when you do tell a lie, they ain't going to catch it. You know what I'm saying? He gave you a lot of truth, but look how he lied like that. And another thing about this book, and then I'm not going to go into the, in it, I'm not going to go in it, into it anymore. If you choose, if the spirit leads you, I mean, you know, be warned. Because at the end of the day, it's like all this. It's a gift and a curse. You get what I'm saying? It's bitter and sweet. Like the scriptures is sweet when you learn and it's bitter when you got to endure. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's the thing. It's good, but like I said, like, like, like Solomon said, you know, with much knowledge is much sorrow. So, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of, you know, meat in here, but it's a lot of like mis, mis, misinformation. This, I mean, like he went into comparing Jezebel because Jezebel with Hillary Clinton, he went into comparing um, Ahab with um, Bill Clinton, he went to compare um, Jeram with um, Barack Obama, and then he went to compare Jehu with guess who? Who do you think he compared? And for that's how you know that's that Israeli American um, relationship. You know that's why when this shit go down and everybody like wait, well everybody, well you know it's funny. You know what I'm saying? People that should be worried ain't worried. They just ah, da, 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 da. And, you know it's just funny to me. But that's why you, you, you it's gonna be Israel with America, and it's gonna be Russia with Iran when it's shit J off. 
But um, he he compared Jehu the the warrior the because if you go into the account of Jehu, Jehu actually destroyed Ahab's line. He killed Jezebel. Well, the bitch tried to. Yeah, he killed her though. He pushed that bitch out the window. <laughs> And then he, uh, you know, he, he tore out a lot of the uh, high places, the groves and the shrines that was to, 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 to Baal. You know what I mean? He did some marvelous, amazing things for the Most High God. He compared him to Donald Trump. So with that, I'm going to go into a couple of scriptures. And then I'm going to end this lesson. Because cause at first I was reading, it made me, when he said that shit, it made me not even want to read it no more. I was like, are you full of shit? Like, what? Hey, nigga. Maybe he did it because America gives Israel all those millions of dollars a year or something. I don't know. Funny. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 10, verse 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. That's a vain fucking thing to be constantly making it seem like you superior. It's funny to me. They want to make it seem like they're more superior to everybody. Nobody can say that you, first of all, it's all this proof coming out that y'all not the real people. That That's why you got the anti-Semitic, um, what's that, the Jewish, um, I forgot the name, the AC, AC, no, it's not the ACLU, but it's that Jewish organization where any, if you slander them, you can get, like, um, prosecuted. Like in shit in Florida, they was just talking about that. You say anything against some of them, you know, Jewish, your ass going to jail, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? It's just funny to me, you know, we say and bring actual factual information, <laughs> history, you know what I'm saying? Just because, and the, the simple fact, when you take time to look at the, I mean, you don't fit the curses, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you don't even fit the description, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, where your fringe is at? Take time to something simple like that. It's saying in the scripture that the Israelites wear fringes. You wear all black with yarmulkes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Ah, and for him to lie like that, like I said, you're a Bible scholar. I, 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 I'm not no biblical scholar. I, I, I like to say that um, I, I, I'm trying to study, but I mean, you, you, you title yourself a scholar. That's why you became a, you know, you got the title rabbi. You know, at the end of the day, you're a teacher. So for you to make a mistake like that, to not recognize that this man is, you know, a teacher would know every person that's whose father. You know what I mean? That's what I would assume. You would not print no book with no major mistake like that unless it was an agenda behind it because he wanted to paint that picture of because that's all he's trying to make it seem like he's all about prophecy. But no, you just matching this person up to this person in history and then to sell fucking books, man, it's all for filthy lucre. Verse eight, he sitteth in the lurking places of the villages in the secret places doth the murder, the innocent and some innocent person going to read that shit and really believe it. That's why you got people that get offended when we call ourselves the Israelites, but you, because you were sitting up there being lied to, <laughs> I mean, like you ain't no fucking Israelite. I be I quick to tell them too. You know you Amalekite. <laughs> you know what I mean? You a uh, Khazar. You know what I mean? It's you've had people to come out like that. What's that guy named? Arthur Kostler. Um, he did this. Cause I'm gonna digress real quick. If you go in the Book of Psalm 64 and verse eight. It says, so they make their own tongues to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. So, make their own tongues fall upon themselves. When you go into um, the 13th tribe, it's a lot. This book by this, this man, author, Cussler, I believe he was an Amalekite, and he exposed the fact that those aren't the real Jews. They were com converts. <laughs> if you go into the book of Maccabees, it tells you how um, John Hercranus actually converted those Edomites into, you know, so, and that was probably not a good, it wasn't a, it wasn't probably, it wasn't a good thing, but John Hercranus was actually, uh, looked like, you, you know, he, he, they was of the tribe of Benjamin, I believe, you know, uh, the Maccabees. So uh, it was either that or the tribe of Levi. It was either the tribe of Levi or Benjamin. I think it was the tribe of Le Levi, Salakia, because I was just, you know, going in on, on this Edomite. But the difference is, though, I do know, like, 
at the end, of the, I, I believe they was Levites too. But the thing is, I'm not gonna sit there. He tried to say that Jehu was not uh, the royal bloodline. <laughs> then like, like, I mean, I made made a little mistake when I said Benjamin the Levi. Kind of, you know. Well, I'm pretty sure it was Levi too, because it was of the priestly class. Because the father, um, Matthias, he was, a, I think, a priest. So I think he was a Le They was of the Levites. Anyhow, uh, but this man, Arthur Kostler, he. I believe it was Amalekite, and he exposed them. And they killed that man. You know what I'm saying? But just like I was just reading it, um, Psalm 64, their tongues shall fall upon themselves. They're going to tell on one another. That's why you got all these, like the dudes like Edward, um, Edward Snowden, and um, that dude um, that started WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they tell it on them. And, and that dude, like I, I've heard a few brothers speak on him. He probably never gonna see the light of day. They hate that. They going They probably starving him, poisoning him. You don't know what the fuck they doing to him. Cause he, they hate it. I mean, like take the time to really digest what he's in jail for. He's in jail for telling the truth. And then you motherfuckers sitting up here talking about, uh, you know, what I mean? like truth will get you killed, man. What do you think the apostles died? You know what I mean? Funny as fuck, though. Like, uh, I don't even really need too many more scriptures. Though. I wrote out a whole list of scriptures. <laughs> What was the point? Like I said, I got what I really wanted. Hold on. Uh, Isaiah 21 and 2. I'm probably going to end it on that. Just proving how much you can't trust the devil. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, that ain't what I wanted. Salakia. I'm going to probably end it at this. Because at the end of the day, this guy got a huge following. This guy, um, like I said, making mucho, mucho dollars off of, you know, made these books. And like I said, I I, I mean, that, that Harbinger, I did read the whole complete thing. I think I read um, Mysteries, too. I just started reading it. It's a decent read because, like I said, it gets you... You know, because of some commentary in there. He, he, he facts you on certain shit, but like I said, some, a few different things... He 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 he's off on, and I don't see no biblical scholar being off on something simple as that. You know what I mean? Like, you can't even miss that up. He was like, you know, Asa was Jehoshaphat's father, and then he was the son of Jehoshaphat. So how did you know that this guy was of the royal bloodline? But because he's trying to uh, paint in a picture. To match up with what's going on today. And that's what, you know, so he's really doing this for filthy lucre. So this is the book of 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Mashiach. Verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So at the end of the day, just because this man reading out the Bible... You know, be telling you, yeah, yeah, this and this and that, and that don't mean that he's righteous. Because at the end of the day, it says it's no marvel for Satan himself can transform himself into an angel of light and mislead your ass. <clears throat> so with that, that's why it's so important to to actually read for oneself. If I wouldn't have read and knew something about scriptures, I'd have believed that shit. I got one more scripture and I'm going to um, close up. So like it. Um, this is the last scripture, and then I'm gonna end it. But like I said, if I didn't read scriptures, that's why I say you, you, you know, a king searches out a thing. It says Revelations one and three. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. And I'm gonna leave it at that because that was the point. Blessed is he that readeth. You know, just because you're gonna have a lot of people that's gonna be misled by these fucking fake ass pastors in these churches that's sitting up there telling you to live a certain kind of way and yet still outside of closed doors they live in a certain kind of way they fucking everything in the congregation they you know what i mean like it's a reason why those churches be in um such disarray you know what i mean when the word church simply means to call out so you, you could have a church if i had another person in here with me while i was doing a video i could there could be a church you know what i mean like but you know so, I mean, you, you, you got men searching for men to lead them when at the end of the day, I mean, and don't get me wrong, you're supposed to have bishops and, and, and whatnot and, and spiritual leaders, but at the same time, 
they supposed to be leading you in a way as an example of actually following the scripture. You like I say, at the end of the day, people tend to forget. The men weren't wealthy that were doing the will of the most high. The apostles weren't wealthy. They did things to make their ends meet. You know, Paul was a tent maker, but at the same time, yeah, I was, I was a carpenter, but at the same time, it, you know, because at the end of the day, contrary to what people believe, it takes money to keep a ministry going. <laughs> you, know, so, you know what I mean? Like, that's just the truth of it. You know what I mean? Like, so just like back then, today, you know, that's why the elders express how much how, how important it is for brothers to be working and doing all these things. So we can be blameless when these Edomites roll on us. Because at the end, of, I'll try to explain this to somebody. You know, in the past, you know, you had the Black Panther movement. You've had all these different movements that all have been infiltrated. I'm even sure they tried to infiltrate this. But at the end of the day, the difference between those and this, this is all based on faith. Those people were learning how to march and fight and tactics and all that. When at the end of the day, none of that shit going to save you. This either might go shooting and hunting for, for fun. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> You might live a dangerous life, but they know how to use that shit. You got to, man, it's just a difference. You get what I'm saying? Like, when I used to think something, like, I grew up in, the, in poverty in the ghetto, just like I'm sure a lot of brothers have, so I'm not, you know, bragging on it, you know. And sometimes we bring a lot of those, that, that mindset, because it's, it's, it's in your subconscious, out on the highways and byways and stealing this truth. That's why you're supposed to be trying to transfer yourself into a new man. But just for us to escape, that's how you know it really is a higher power. Because as dangerous as it is, is, how do you think you escaped that? You know what I mean? If it wasn't the, the most high. You know I mean, guys I know that ain't no longer here or they ain't coming home or they just so caught up in the system that, you know, they think it's the, that's life to go to jail every two or three years. You know how miserable that is? You know what kind of hell that is? You know, I know guys still getting high and, you know, they can't stop. You know what I'm saying? And you know what kind of hell that is? Like, that's hellish. You subjected to the same torment. I mean, you know, because once you get to a certain point, like, that getting high shit ain't fun like that no more. You know what I mean? It's more so, I think motherfuckers do it just to, motherfuckers smoking, they stressed out, they smoking to try and have fun, they smoking, you know what I mean? Just because it ain't nothing else to do. Like, it's more of a habit now. Nah, like, I, I ain't mean to digress, I just was tripping on it. So that's why, like I said, at the end of the day, as blessed as the man that read, read it. Because, like I said, if I wouldn't have read that, I wouldn't have knew no better. I would have been, and, 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 and like I said, a lot of pastors know that these people don't read, and that's why they do what they do. You know what I'm saying? If, <laughs> well, with that, Salakia, for uh, taking this further than what I meant to, I want to um, give all praise, honor, glory. Call her law, law, Yahweh. Wow. Salakia. Call her law, law. Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha, Rachak, with that's thumb. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Peace and salutations to the Akim around the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. Shalom to the Akwath and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willing, this was an edifying video. Shalom to the confusion of the face, brethren. Join them to our ranks. And with that, Adawan Ratazah, I come at you with another lesson as soon as possible. And with that, I want to say Shalom, Shalom, keep your head up. You know, Lord willing, this was edifying. You know, brother, stay in the scriptures. Sister, stay in the scriptures. You know, with that, just stay prayed up. And with that, Shalom, Shalom, and a barber ball.